are flying and then switch it just before landing. Alright. So, um, parking brake is... Uh, and oh. then I, is this the parking brake here? Oh yeah, let me give you a quick... That's the parking brake there. Let me give you a quick uh, run through of some of the things you, that you'll need to look at and use. So, you're going to need to look at the altimeter, the airspeed, the black ball later, don't worry about it right now, the RPM gauge, and move the throttle. So I'd like you to move the throttle all the way up and back. Well, that's not too hard. It can be harder if you turn the friction lock on. If it's moving on you, then you can turn the friction lock on tighter to stop it from vibrating. Alright, so it's not constantly changing speed. And then you saw the elevator trim that you move with your hand? Yep. Good. Notice there's no electric trim. If there was, it'd be here. Yep. And then this is the flap actually, so this thing that looks like a traditional parking brake, this is 10 degrees, 25 degrees, and 40, and then you only have to use the button to retract. Alright. Go ahead and try that. 10, 25, 40. That's it. Simple enough. And some basics, I, I, should, I won't spend too much time on this because you've been flying a simulator, but when we... Uh, when we take off, your most difficult job will be just keeping us straight on the runway with the rudder pedals. The airplanes typically, if they're going to go off the runway, go off the runway to the left because of the engine pushing too hard on the right. So we have to press on more right, right rudder pedal to keep us straight. And then we need to accelerate to 55 knots. And then I'll call a rotate and then we'll pull up. Yeah, and then you go do it like this. Go ahead and put your hands on the yoke. And you gently just keep pulling back and back and back with a continuous motion. Eventually the nose will come up and you want the tip of the nose to come to the horizon and leave it there for the climb. It's not really the ideal climb, but it's close. And it's and easy. It's just leave the control stick like this? Yeah, if the nose starts to go too high, you may have to actually push it forward. And then it may not be perfectly trimmed, even though we have it on neutral. So after takeoff, I'll say, let me see the plane for a moment and then relax the controls and let me uh, trim it and then I'll give it back to you and then you'll be able to work more with trim uh, later. All right. And then when we're climbing, I'll start off doing the right rudder, but pretty shortly I'm going to give that responsibility to you. All right. And so you'll have to hold some right rudder pressure to keep the plane from yawing. All right. And then they're using runway 30 now, and I'm going to take you out by the ocean if that's okay. All right, that's fine. And so we're supposed to go straight up to almost Highway 92 and then turn left. And then we're going to turn left and we're going to go over and then come around back in. Uh, not right away. We're going to go uh, over where Highway 92 crosses the Santa Cruz Mountains, go out like south of Half Moon Bay. When we come back into the airport, if they're still using runway 30, we'll be doing what that guy does. So we'll fly over the airport at 1200 and then enter the downwind base and final. All right. And then for uh, our departure, though, you're going to need to level off at 1200 feet until we make our turn before Highway 92. So I'll have you uh, lower the nose and it's necessary retrim. So if you have to push forward on the yoke and the plane is fighting you and you're trying to level, you have to push forward on the trim until it doesn't fight you anymore. All right. And then is that like instantaneous or if you push you'll, it too much? You'll totally feel the difference and if you do it too much, you'll feel that too. All right. So then let's just go over a bit. So then we're going to live off at 1200, right? Initially, that's right. And then after we turn at the Highway 92, just before that, then I'll have you climb up to 3000 to go out by the ocean. All right. Because then we have to go over the mountains. Yeah, the Santa Cruz Mountains where we're going to cross them are a thousand feet. All right. A thousand, okay. All right. And then any questions? Nope. Basic flight plan. And then you can bank. Typically when you turn, I'd like you to try to turn between 20 and 30 degrees of bank. This is not working right now, but it will yeah. soon. So then, so like between this line and this line? No, it goes uh, 10, 20, 30. So you can go between the second and the third, the fat line. So, so the fat line is this. 30. All right. This one's uh, 30, so try not to go past 30 until later. We may do like a 45 degree bank later for fun, but in the beginning just make 20 to 30 degree banks. And, so then, and how fast you roll over to them is up to you typically. If you're rolling really slow, I may say roll a little faster. And then once you get to the bank angle, neutralize the yoke, just hold some back pressure to hold your altitude. And then once you want to stop turning, just go the other way until your wings are level and then relax the back right. pressure. Then I'm going to be in charge of this, the RPM gauge, the altimeter, and the airspace. 
It's very good. And I'll do the throttle for you on takeoff. All right. And probably your first level off. But then after that, I usually try to direct you to do it. All right. And so then, I may set like set like on run up. I'll say set two thousand RPM so I can check the the engine ignition. All right. So then like. Is there any like guidance we have for where like eighty percent is or just the just gauge? the uh, RPM gauge? So I can say, can you reduce the throttle to two thousand RPM or increase right, the throttle? And then this to is two thousand. Right? That's right. All right. And you don't want it to go over two thousand seven hundred. That's correct. That's the red line. Yeah. Mm. Right. Very good. So I'm going to go ahead and continue on with the um, lineup mm. check. And have you started a car before? A bit. The airplane's somewhat similar, except the airplanes don't start as reliably all the time. So when you engage the starter, you can crank until the engine starts and starts to combust. So then both start and then just turn it back to L? Or I mean R? No, you'll go uh, through both. You'll push it to start. And then if you let go, it'll go to both automatically, just like a car goes to the ignition position. All right, and then are we going to make it go to the R then, or is that going to be after we start the engine? Uh, I'll do that in the run-up. All right. But um, what I want you to be able to do is to engage the starter and hold it on until the engine is combusting well, then you can let it go. Or if the engine is cranking too hard, like, like for five seconds, and it doesn't start, it may say stop, and then you let it go. All right. Because I think it'll be fun for you to try to, I got to start the plane. Now, Theoretically, if you have a warm engine and um, you're going to start, you don't have to prime, but this engine was flown quite a while ago, so I'm going to go ahead and prime it at least a little bit. All right. Um, Push in the gas in. Where's the primer? Is it? It's here. All right. So you can go ahead and pull that out and then push it in like three so times. This. One, because you don't want to flood the engine. Correct. So two and then three. That's it. There. And then I'm going to push it in. Turn it. And I turn on the battery in the alternator, and you can see our fuel gauges work. I'm going to turn on the fuel pump, and we have fuel pressure. The uh, anti collision light, because you're required in the daytime. Uh, the mixture rich, the throttle slightly open, and then I'll yell clear, and you can start. All right. Clear! Oh, look at the Zeppelin. Is that? Right. Oh, cool. Cool, Odeon. Okay, so start it. Mm -hmm.